What is today Latin America was once many native nations. Spain, Portugal, France, England, the Dutch, and Danish invaded. They carried out genocide after genocide and enslaved both natives and Africans. After independence, most new governments were still white dominated, with more genocides against natives in nations like Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. European powers hold on to some territories even today and kept invading to take their colonies back. The U.S. invaded too, overthrowing or trying to overthrow over 60 governments, the last attempt in the year 2020 in Venezuela. The U.S. also took half of Mexico's land and a tenth of its people, then Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. There's a long history of many Americans fearing and hating Latinos. Latin America's image and reality is often one of instability, poverty, drug cartels, revolutions, corruption, and refugees. But it did not have to be this way. Latin America could remain all or mostly native nations. I spoke about this in detail in the previous series, What If Natives Won? Poverty, white domination, and foreign invasions could have been stopped, prevented, or limited. The U.S. could have been more Latino culturally with higher numbers of Latinos. The U.S. could have been less racist, less dominating, or the U.S. could be defeated. Some Latin American nations could even become regional or world powers. There is a huge lack of alternate history about Latin America and Latinos. So much alternate history is Europe-centered, mostly because so much history and he history teaching is Europe-centered. This series is dedicated to scenarios, points of departure, and possibilities of Latin American victory within Latin America, and a more Latino or less racist American society. My name is Al Carroll. I'm Associate Professor of History at Northern Virginia Community College. I've written mostly about wars, veterans, human rights, and genocide. My next history book will be Genocide Denial in America, about the seven genocides against indigenous people that took place in the U.S. that most people were never taught about, don't know, or deny. I've also written some science fiction, mostly alternate history. One story, Timely Saviors, appeared in a short story collection, The Witness Paradox. I'm also, together with Rob Schmidt of Bluecorn Comics, editing and putting out a short story, alternate history collection, What If Natives Won? I've also written a sci-fi alternate history book, The Man in Black, the first of a series. No part of Latin America is more abused and more dominated by the U.S. than Central America. Nicaragua was invaded eight times over a hundred years and U.S. terrorism killed 50,000 in the 1980s. Panama was invaded seven times and its, very, and its very existence was because of American imperialism and greed. Honduras was invaded eight times and the term Banana Republic was invented to describe what the nation became. El Salvador lost 80,000 to a civil war with U.S.-backed death squads. Worst of all was Guatemala being invaded five times, plus the U.S. took part in an outright genocide against Mayan Indians that killed 200,000. Because they are small nations and close to the powerful and often racist U.S., American elites have treated it as not just a backyard, but a piggy bank to raid, and sometimes a graveyard to fill. But it wasn't always this way. Before Euro European invasion, much of it was powerful Mayan city-states. As a Spanish colony, it was attached to Mexico. When Mexico gained independence, Central America was part of it. At the beginning of independence, Mexico went through a, the first of a series of conflicts. Central America saw its chance and broke away. It then became the Federal Republic of Central America. The new president, Manuel Arce, dissolved the new assembly. Three provinces rebelled. Liberals led by Francisco Morazan overthrew Arce in the Central American Civil War. The war took three years and both sides together didn't have 5,000 troops. Battles were often fought with as few as 500 troops. Any number of battles could have changed the outcome of the war. Then Rafael Carrera led a peasant revolt in Guatemala. Other revolts then broke out in each province and the Republic ended 13 years after its start. For the Central American Republic to continue to today, either one side needs to win more completely and quickly, or there needs to be no split between liberals and conservatives in Guatemala and El Salvador. To avoid the split, Manuel Arce should not shut down the National Assembly, the Republic's Congress. 
then there is a chance that arguments between liberals and conservatives will be in the assembly and not with the civil war. At the very least, such warfare between the two sides will come, be, will come later, as much as 30 years later, like happened in Mexico, and by that time Central America will be in the habit of being united as a nation. A larger nation is harder for the U.S. to invade, overthrow, or take sides in its internal conflicts. It means that instead of over 30 U.S. coups, wars, and even genocide, there would be three or four. Being such small nations, the U.S. sent troops to overthrow governments in Central America as casually as sending the National Guard to break up riots in the U.S. cities, and with the same excuses, restoring order. Central America has 37 million people today. As a republic, it would stretch from Costa Rica north to at least Guatemala. Whether Chiapas stays part of Central America is not certain. Mexico could take it as it did in our own timeline, or it could stay in Central America because of Mexico being occupied with its own problems. Belize, at the time called British Honduras, likely stays British because Central America doesn't have the military power to drive them out, even when Britain is occupied with world wars. Panama likely stays part of Colombia. It is very likely there is no Panama Canal. Instead, there's more likely to be a Nicaraguan Canal. Lake Nicaragua cuts across more than half the peninsula from the Pacific to the Atlantic, with the San Juan River leading from it to the Atlantic coast. Making it into a canal is far easier than across Panama. The Central American Republic is almost certain to build it and prosperous, likely with French or British help. Doing so could make the Central American Republic a regional power almost equal to Colombia, and it's very possible the two will have a border war at some point. This is the end of the video. Please repost freely, like, quote, and comment. This has been Latin American Victory. Next time we will discuss what if Americans in Texas are defeated.